Hey there everybody, Jimmy with To The Top Crane here. And uh, today we're down in the old crane cave. Um, but I wanted to go over a few things I got some questions on. And uh, that pertains to the block and reeving. Uh, and also the weight of the block, pill, ball, whatever, whatever attachments hanging on the end of the rope. So I got the old whiteboard set up, got the old dry erase marker, and with my limited artistic ability, we are going to try to draw some stuff and hopefully uh, everybody will understand, that doesn't understand, hopefully everybody that doesn't understand will understand better of why we use more parts of line, how we reeve those parts of line, and why the weights of the block and stuff matter. So, on the end of your boom, so if this is the end of the boom, and then we've got a block down here, and just a hook hanging on it. Okay, in the end of the boom, there are shivs, and then in the block, same thing. So if each one of these lines represents a shiv or pulley on the end of the boom, um, that's where our ropes are going to fall through. And then also there's typically a couple on top of the on top of the boom. One of them's for your main line, the other one's for your auxiliary winch if you've got two winches. So the way this works is actually I'm going to put the correct number of shivs that the Tadano's got in it because that's what you guys will see most on my channel and I believe it has seven of them. and then down here on the bottom block let's just make this a three shiv block it'll be easier okay so if each one of these lines is a shiv or sheave is how it's spelled then we've got seven up top we've got three on the block now when we run our rope if we're only reeving the main line and say we're gonna reeve it for two parts of line so what we'll do is we'll come over the outermost most portion shiv and I'm gonna draw the rope actually let's do the rope in uh, what other colors we have let's do the rope in red because red and rope both start with R Okay, so we will come off the tip of the boom with our rope and we will go down through the second shiv on the tip of the boom into the middle shiv of the block and then the rope will come around that shiv and back up to the dead man on the boom. So it'll be attached to a lug on the side of the boom. What this does is it gives us two parts of line. Each one of these is called a part of line. So if we were single line, it would just be a single rope right down the middle hooked to a lifting lug on the pill or the ball. Since we're using two parts, we're gonna go off of the side shiv on the top of the boom, down through shiv number two, around the middle shiv, and back up to the lifting lug on the side of the boom. So what that does is our line pull is 16,750 pounds on the Tadano. So when you add two parts of line, that makes it 33,500 pounds of line pull at that point. Each time we add a part of line, we increase our line pull by 16,750 pounds. So I hope everybody's following along with that. That's, uh, we learned that in science class in elementary school, basically with pulleys and whatnot. Okay, now if we were reaving multiple parts of line, so I'm gonna erase that one. So say we wanna put six parts of line in this. And we can do that with a three shiv block. We can have six parts of line. That's the maximum parts of line you can have with three shivs is six parts. So the same thing still holds true on which shivs we're going to use to start out. So we come off of the outermost shiv on the end of the boom, 
we come down through shiv number two and then it's gonna go down and around the first shiv on the block back up to shiv number four over shiv number four back down to shiv number two on the block around shiv number two up and over shiv number six back down to shiv number three and then the tail would come back up and attach to the dead man on the on the end of the boom so the reason why we do that the reason why we don't just stack them in one two and three on the end of the boom is you want to spread the weight of the load evenly across the tip of the boom head actually they call that the top block so this is this is the top block up here this is the bottom block as the technical terms for it a lot of people just call this the boom tip or the boom head whatever but this is the top block this is the bottom block that's why the ATB or anti two block is called what it is because it keeps these two blocks from crashing into each other so the anti two block is just a switch on the side of the boom uh, has it hangs by a chain and it's got a weight on it as this block gets reeled up towards the top block it will pick that weight up which will activate the switch and it shuts off cable up shuts off boom down shuts off telescope out those are the three functions that can cause the block to get the blocks to get even closer so hope everybody hope I haven't lost anybody on that so again to put six parts of line in we come down off the outermost portion or the outermost shiv across shiv number two on the tip of the boom or on the top block around the out, outermost shiv on the bottom block up over shiv number four back down over the middle shiv back up and over shiv number six back down around the farthest shiv to the right on the block and then back up and attach it to the boom tip and doing that it spreads the the load out evenly across the tip of the boom which is important if you don't do that if we were to load all these ropes into one side then it would cause the boom to want to rotate this direction as the loads put on it so it would actually put a twist in the boom so that's why you evenly load it across the top of the boom tip now if we're running single line let me erase all this and occasionally we will run single line with with the crane now I got to redraw my shivs because I erased them there's my other marker okay so let's just put a ball down here with a hook on the end that hooks obviously been overloaded because it's stretched out at our attachment point now we have a couple couple different options on running single line at least on the end of the 180g one option is we can come right over the middle shiv and there's a shiv that lines up in the center of the stack perfectly with that top shiv so we would just come straight over the top down through the middle shiv and attach straight to the ball which would be just a straight line down as straight as I can make it I guess so that's one option option number two is and you guys have probably seen it in the videos and I'm surprised nobody's asked the question there is an attachment that hangs off the side it generally hangs out over here and what it is it's another shiv that it, it stows over here so that's where it, when you're not using it that's where it stays but it's another shiv that actually sticks out mm, I think center line to center line is almost two feet and that's called a single top and what we can do is we can take this shiv 
and it unpins and it actually pins around to this side and it puts one single shiv right here in the middle approximately two feet out further past the tip of the boom and we can run the rope uh, come on shaky hands we can run the rope over the top of this middle one over the end of the single top when it's folded out here we'll just draw it on here if we had the single top on it would sit Wow, that looks like a five-year-old drew it, but hey, whatever works, right? If we had the single top on, it would sit like that. And if you looked at it from the side, uh, more crude drawing here. You have your top shiv here, and then the single top would actually be out like so. And the rope would come over the top over the end of the single top and down. So at that point we would just come straight down here with it to the ball. The drawback to using the single top is it takes 1200 pounds out of your chart instantly. So as soon as you put this single top attachment on the end of the boom and run the rope over it, then you automatically have to deduct 1200 pounds because of the extra length of boom that it's given you. So that's why I don't typically use it unless I need just an extra few feet of reach. Um, generally, if I've got to pick something that is almost line pull capacity with a single part of line, then I will just run over the shivs that are already on the boom tip. Now, now that we're done with that part, I got asked about why would they add extra weight to the block? Okay, so if your boom is sticking up like so, and again, I'm a pretty poor artist, so I'm a crane operator, I guess. If your boom's sitting up like so, and you run your one rope over the top of the tip, and it's really hard to draw sideways. And it's hanging down here. Say this is 100 feet of boom. So you've got essentially 100 feet of cable back here, or 100 feet of rope, and 100 feet of rope on this side. Then you've got equal weight on both sides of the tip. So the ball has to be weighted. There has to be weight here to pull that rope up the back side of the boom and down over the tip. That's why the ball is technically called an overhaul ball. So a lot of people have heard it called just the crane ball, or I, I call ours a pill because it's cylindrical shaped, it's, it's not a round ball, so I just call it a pill. But that weight has to pull that rope off of the winch, and the, the winch is hydraulically powered. It'll sit there and spin. It's not like it goes into free spool. It is powered down. So if you don't have that weight there, what it'll do is the, the winch drum will sit here and spin and it'll just bird nest the rope on the drum. The drum, the cable, or the rope will go slack on the drum. You'll end up with a big mess back here on the backside because the cable can't go be drawn up over the tip of the boom with no weight. And if you watch some rotator videos and whatnot, like uh, Plaza Towing, Ron Pratt, those guys, they don't have a weight on their on the on the termination end of their cable, so a lot of times they have to pull it. The reason why they don't have a weight is because they're also using that as a winch, so they're dragging that cable horizontally, and you wouldn't want to be dragging a 600 pound weight horizontally across the ground. So that's why we have weight on the end of the pill, or that's why the ball weighs what it does, or the pill weighs what it does. On the Tadano, the pill weighs 661 pounds. So that's to compensate for 200 plus, actually 300 plus feet of boom tip height. So you'd have 300 feet of rope back here, 300 feet of rope on this side. <clears throat> it takes that weight to pull that rope up the back side of the boom. And it also keeps the winch cable tight or the rope tight on the winch drum. Now, why would they add extra weight to a block? Well, when you start adding parts of line here, 
The load that this line sees from here to the winch is effectively cut in half. So I hope that makes sense. It basically would allow, if you have 100 pounds here, it only sees 50 pounds on this side because of being ran through a pulley and back up. So if we add a whole bunch of parts of line on this side, so we just keep running around through a block, the load that's exerted on this line back here gets less and less, less and less each time we keep adding parts of line. If this block doesn't weigh enough, then this line will go slack and the same thing will happen as if you had one part of line with no weight on it. When you go to cable down, the winch drum is going to turn and no rope is going to run up the back side of the boom. Typically when you see people add weight to blocks, it's generally when they're getting into the great big crawler cranes. Um, Mammut, uh, who's some of the other bigger outfits. Anyway, you can look them up. They have a lot of big specialized crawler cranes with a bunch of parts of line. A lot of times they'll run uh, multiple winches to the same block and uh, in order for that block to be able to be lowered and keep the, rope, the ropes tight, it's got to have a lot of weight added to it. So anyway, hopefully that uh, covers it for everybody on that. If you have any more questions, throw them at me. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you want me to explain something differently on this, let me know. I will uh, do what I can with it, but that's the best way I knew to explain it without setting the crane up and, uh, well, I'm definitely not going to show you guys. I'm not going to run my winch without a weight on it. Also, before we shut this down, any new crane operators out there that are watching my stuff because they want to... Uh, pick up some tips or whatever, learn from a guy that probably isn't a real good teacher, but anyway. If you have your ball hanging here, or a block, whatever, you got your rope back here, and say you want to set this on the ground for some reason, whether you're cutting it loose and you're going to switch attachments to a block or you're going to swing the jib, whatever you're going to do, do not cable this down into the ground. As soon as that ball touches the ground or the weight touches the ground, this line back here is going to go slack and you're going to you're going to screw up the wraps on the drum. So, the way to do this is you get close to where you get boom down, get your boom in configuration that you're going to use whether it's retracted, some people like it stuck out a little bit, sometimes you have to have it stuck out a little bit, whatever. But you get your boom in the configuration that you're going to use for whatever you're trying to set up. And then you can cable down until this gets close. Once it gets close, then you boom down. So you stop winching down and you boom down. There should be no reason at all why this weight would touch the ground with you still cabling down. If you do that without, well, I guess, I mean, you can, as long as someone's pulling on this rope. As long as you have some means of physically pulling this rope up the boom, then it's permissible. But if you try to pile this, if you set this weight on the ground, you try to pile this rope up on it with the winch, it's not going to happen. You're just going to ruin the way your rope's wrapped on your drum on the back side. So, again, you cable down, get it close, and then boom down. Stop cabling down. If you do... I'll cover this real quick while we're talking about it. If you do for some reason get your rope bird's nested back here on your drum, which it can happen even if you don't set this weight down. Sometimes wind, if you have a uh, crosswind, can blow your rope across the drum to where it's not laying evenly as you're, you know, as you're winching up, the wind's pushing against the side of the rope. Sometimes it'll push it out a few wraps away from the rope laying next to it and you can end up with a spot where it's birds nested. Or I've seen guys do it by running high speed, like you're running your winch in high speed with multiple parts of line in, which typically is a no-no. The reason for that is that rope running through the shivs and stuff can't run as fast as what your winch does, and you'll end up birds nesting your rope 
on your winch drum by running your winch at high speed with multiple parts of line out here. But if it does happen, and sometimes you can't see it, I'm fortunate that I've got cameras on the winches on that Tadano. The way you can sometimes tell is your, your ball or your block will be jerky as it's coming down or going up. So what'll happen is if your rope, like say this is your winch drum, and your rope's gonna lay in here all nice and pretty, well, if it gets to a spot where it's jacked up, sometimes you'll have uh, rope overlapped it or overlapped one, and this would be pretty extreme. But what happens is as this rotates and this rope tries to center itself, it'll, it'll slide and it may drop the ball or the block six or seven inches. It may only drop it two inches, but it'll be erratic. So as you're cabling down, your ball will move erratically. It'll be pretty jumpy coming down or pretty jumpy going up. And that's one telltale sign that you need to get out and look at your winch drum. If it does get birds nested, you need to fix it immediately. You need to stop what you're doing and fix it right then. Because as this stuff lays over the top of itself in disarray, the rope can actually cut into itself. Or can damage some of the strands, some of the lays, all of that fun stuff. So if you discover that the winch drum is backlashed or birds nested, you need to have a person stand out here on the end and this is the one time that you can cable down and set your weight on the ground. You put your pill down and you have whatever it takes to tug on this rope to get it pulled off, get enough pulled off that drum until it starts laying evenly and then have someone watch it as you're winching it back up. It's especially true with newer rope. If you just replace the rope on your grain and it hasn't been formed to the drum like it was on the spool, um, a lot of times when you're wrapping new rope, you'll have to have a guy there with a hammer tapping it and use a soft, like a rubber mallet and tapping it in tight against the lay next to it. So, Hopefully I didn't derail everybody on that, but if your ball or ball or block is erratic cabling up and down, you need to get out and look at your winch drum. If it's jacked up, you gotta fix it. You can't keep picking with, with the jacked up winch cable or winch rope on your drum. So that was 25 minutes of ranting. Hopefully uh, I explained that well enough that everybody will understand it. For those that are crane operators that are watching my channel and already know this stuff, you know, I'm glad you guys do understand it, but there are people that watch my stuff that aren't familiar with cranes, and uh, I will do my best to try to explain it to everybody in a way that everybody can understand it. So, anyway, with that, to the top crane is.